increase that. As we join in singing, just as I am without one plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can Cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am, the witch receive, wilt welcome pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I Just as I am thy love unknown has broken every barrier down, now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I I you may be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Gwen Ben Dixon. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This very short litany of hope is uh, made up of Bible passages that encourage us in the face of death, that uh, grant us comfort and hope. I tell you the truth, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be condemned. He has crossed over from death to life. My sheep hear my voice, 
I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hands. We join in speaking the words, the comforting words of the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I chose this epistle lesson for today because it just reminded me of Gwen. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues put on love, which binds all things together in perfect unity. And our gospel is one that Gwen chose for this day. Uh, it's a beloved and perfect focus. Uh, I'm sure some of you have, have seen it on cards, that, on TV, even golf matches. Can you imagine? Uh, paying people to go to golf, to watch golf, and carry a sign for John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. <coughs> me. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. We join in singing one of her very favorite hymns, The Old Rugged Cross. On a hill far away stood the old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a love world of loss and theirs was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross when the trophies at last I day lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. In that old rugged cross, so despised by the world, has a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cherish the old rugged Cross, till my trophies at last I lay down. Cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. In that old rugged cross, stained with blood so divine, a wondrous beauty I see. 
For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it some day for a crown. To that old rugged cross I will ever be true. It shame and reproach gladly bear. Then he'll call me some day to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it some day for a crown. Fix your eyes upon Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father. Dear Kim, Marty, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, Pam, Sandy, I, I know I've seen a lot of your pictures when my wife was helping uh, her pack up for Texas, but you all look a little older now. Well, all of you, other family and friends of Gwen Ben Dixon, I have found that like all of you who knew and loved her, when I think of Gwen, I smile. And I smiled in particular when I saw the hymn she chose the old rugged cross, matching it with our text from John 3.16. They are tied to one another in this beloved hymn. And I'll get to that later, but the most important thing must come first. It was sometime in 1935 after her birth on March 22nd. Here we are on the eve of her natal holiday. It was sometime in that year that Dwayne and Adra or Adra? Adra brought baby Gwen to the, in, to the waters of baptism in Milo or Aiken? I, oh, I know, Arcany. Aikany. I don't have that word right in front of me, so blanking. Well, it was there that she was brought by her loving parents and so many others who are no longer with us. They brought her to the waters of baptism, to that font where as the word was spoken, the Holy Spirit worked faith into her heart, and God claimed her as his much-loved daughter for time and eternity. Like I said, there's no one here today who remembers that day, but it is marked, it is written, her name is there in the book of life. The promises made by her parents and the congregation to raise her in the one true Christian faith were carried out with love and joy. Gwen's life radiated with qualities that were mentioned in the reading from Colossians. Compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Those things were lived out in the crucible of the challenges in life. Gwen used all those challenges to make, make a difference. She chose faith. She chose Life. She helped others as she herself was helped in times of sorrow. And she showed it also in strength 
and in comfort and in love and in laughter. Being widowed twice, raising three children as a single mother, remarrying, then suffering the death of her daughter Mindy with health challenges to face, and particularly in the recent years, Gwen's faith always remained strong and sure. Here it is. Growing up in Ankeny, Iowa, with faith and church life at the center of that community, the Taylor household was active in church and community activities. Gwen, outstanding athlete and brainy. She was valedictorian of her high school class, and she was a spelling bee winner. Is that passed on through the generations? You can tell me later. Uh, those achievements have much to do with memorizing, memorizing facts and dates, uh, things you have to have in your head for a test. Uh, some people can even memorize just the contents, the chapters of a book, and still pass their tests. You have to have a mind that can bring it up, bring it forth, and make use of what you've learned. Now, I'm quite certain that Gwen memorized John 3.16, excuse me, for Sunday school, or maybe she learned it at home with her parents, or in public school of all places. Memorizing the 23rd Psalm and John 3.16 was part of the curriculum in the 40s and 50s. All children in America were learning passages from the Bible. It's hard to imagine that, but... She knew that through the words of this verse, she had everlasting life and the promise of heaven. And that's why we gather after the death of a loved one who's died in the faith. That's why we gather to focus on the cross and the resurrection in the face of this death. Yes, there were years of decay, decline and extra care. There were years when she needed extra attention, and you gave it to her. In Texas, up in New York, um, you provided her with the kind of love and care that she so graciously showed to you in your life. Uh, she loved family. She loved extended family. She loved people. She brought a lot of joy and character to all family gatherings. She particularly loved you great-grands and Grands, some of you are grands who are grown up. Oh my gosh. Um, and she enjoyed any kind of family gathering. Little ones brought her joy, especially in these last couple of years. Little Stevie, who's here today. First airplane ride all the way from New York. <sighs> Costs a lot of money to get yourself out of New York. I have a brother who lives there. I'm just kidding. So rejoicing in the blessings God bestowed on her, and the faith evidenced in all the seasons of her life. Today is a time to remember, reflect, and celebrate the resurrection and the sure and certain knowledge that Gwen is now in the near presence of God. If anyone here today does not have that assurance and hope, this Gwen's death is another reminder that we too will face death and that the way to the Father is through the Son. It's the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now is a call to each of us to daily repentance and renewed faith because such turning causes God and all of heaven to rejoice. And just imagine that. Gwen went up and joined that party. To know Gwen was to know she enjoyed a good celebration. She also loved hard work well done. Her focus on everything in front of her was amazing. She loved to organize for her lobbyist boss and Iowa, who, like all those who came into her circle throughout her life, ended up as a friend. She was able to start and continue for many long years a thriving Mary Kay business. But it was never all about work. The Svartfager and Ben Dixon families enjoyed sports, family time shared in each other's company and mutual support. Gwen loved relaxing at the lake in Minnesota in the summers when the kids were growing up. She loved cards. In the final days of the Faith Pinochle Club, Gwen was playing at our house. 
I have another group of people. We all switched tables and had a good time. And we all heard her say, I'll have to quit if I ever get a double pinochle. Well, it happened that night. We were all there to witness it and how we laughed and rejoiced. You were children and grandchildren likely too. Remember uh, camping trips, shared times of dancing, silliness and fun that you witnessed when she, whenever she was together with her dear sister Carolyn, who's also now in God's near presence, her husband Rudy, well, and just all of you, all of her friends. She loved those things. And, oh, did I mention Gwen loved golf? She was good. How good? She always had a drive and ensuing so shots going straight down the fairway. She and Dale were active, happy country club members in Nebraska, Texas, and they came here to the village to golf and enjoy life in retirement. With friends they made here at Faith and in the village, friends from everywhere they'd lived, family who came to visit, friends she made from all over the village. Able to place a ball close to the cart path, never having to stray into the rough or the woods. She found joy in putting a W next to the winner of each round of golf. And funny thing, all those Ws were right next to the name Gwen. Uh, now, she could have been giving out lots of advice on how to golf. Anybody who's ever golfed, you know there are always people willing to tell you what you need to improve. But well, I was so bad that my brothers were always telling me <laughs> what to do to improve. But she didn't do that. She didn't give out that kind of uh, advice. Uh, that's just not how she operated. Fellowship and fun were at the center of Gwen Golf, as Marty and, and the sons and grandchildren called it. Now, Gwen was not a perfect person because none of us are, but she always knew where to come for forgiveness of sins, for God's word and the sacraments. She and Dale were invested in congregational life and service to others, sharing the truth of John 3.16 to all who would listen, but mostly modeling God's love and forgiveness. It was just a natural part of their lives. And now for the connection between John 3.16 and the old rugged cross. It was 1912 when a revivalist preacher in the Midwest named Evangelist George Bennard wrote this hymn. Now, he was preparing for a, a revival meeting, a, a tent revival uh, in Michigan. He was concentrating on John 3.16, and all of a sudden, he could see and, and feel that the rugged cross, how hard it must have been for Jesus with his back torn open to be on that cross, to die for our sins, and to set us free. And he just kept focusing on that, and all of a sudden, just flowing onto the page were the, verse, were the words of verse 1 of the old rugged cross. Now, uh, my brother shared this story with me a couple weeks ago. I couldn't believe the serendipity in that. Um, and, and in his version, all four verses happened all at once. When I went and Googled it, <laughs> there were two other ways it was told. And basically, that first verse came, and then... He just wasn't getting the rest of it until all of a sudden, one evening, three other verses were there. They were completed. They were finished. They were just what he wanted. So he got out his guitar, and he played them for his wife, and she said, that is a most excellent hymn. So he premiered it in a place familiar to Wisconsinites at a tent revival in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. And it spread like wildfire became a tent revival song and then a hymn in the hymnals throughout the United States and the world. Didn't show up in Lutheran hymnals <laughs> because, well, we like our hymns in German and then translated. And you can't translate the old rugged cross into German and then back into English, I guess. But it's sure, certainly a beloved hymn. It was my dad's beloved hymn. He took my brother Mike, who was telling me the story, to uh, a Lenten service, not at our church, but another Lutheran church, south side of town. And uh, 
my, they sang this hymn and my dad was in his glory. Now he sang so loud, how loud, he could have peeled paint off a wall. <laughs> and my brother's memory was our dad singing with great joy and love, the old rugged cross. What a beautiful thing for us to contemplate today that clinging to the cross for forgiveness, for life eternal, now she has exchanged that rugged cross for a crown. And I think we'll all agree she would have loved a tiara. <laughs> so in all seasons and situations, we find all our hope and consolation when we looked to the cross where our sins were paid for completely and forever. God's greatest gift to us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Looking to the cross, may we find today and each day the faith, hope, and trust in the unfailing love of God. May he be your comfort in this hour. Amen. Now, since the earliest days of the church, probably already in the second century, uh, people were, or even before that, people were reciting the Apostles' Creed. And in a, the life of a, of a Christian, in the Lutheran tradition and Catholic tradition and other traditions, it is spoke at the time of, spoken at the time of baptism and then on the day of confirmation. And Gwen confirmed her faith, spoke about it publicly in front of the congregation and said she would be faithful even unto death. So it's spoken then at confirmation, sometimes at weddings, but definitely at the time of Christian burial because it is a summary of the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, that, that the disciples, the apostles, proclaimed and changed the world. God has made us as people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have died peacefully and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have sought to do your holy will. To your name with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We now commend Gwen and commit her remains to the care of our Lord and Savior. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Gwen Ben Dixon, 
Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a shepherd to your sheep, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. We commit her remains to your eternal care in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection, the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subdue all things to himself. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in, with favor and give you peace. We conclude with the recessional hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Uh, then you will, you're all invited to come to the reception in the fellowship hall and there have even more remembrances and stories about Gwen. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me from all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Through this world of toil and snares, if I falter, Lord, who cares? Who with me my burden shares? None but thee, dear Lord, none but thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. When my feeble life is o'er, time for me will be no more. Guide me safely, hopefully, to the sure kingdom shore, to thy shore. Just a closer walk with thee, and it, Jesus, is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Um, I don't know where you want to put the app.